Hello and welcome, I'm Dr. Nicola and this is Aspen Talks Health where we learn about alternative healing modalities and how to live a compassionate and healthy life. Today with me is Larry Spatz. He is the founder and director of MediSun and MediSun Health and I brought him on specifically because he has discovered or developed a new phototherapy technology that is helping people with chronic pain, with inflammation, depression, is even alleviating symptoms of MS and Parkinson's. So this is a really interesting new technology using light therapy. It is fascinating. I'm very excited to learn more about it with you on the show. Welcome, Larry. Thank you. My pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Good. So uh, tell us about your journey. How, how did you even come to this? Well, I'll give you a brief background. I'm, I just turned 75 and about 10 years ago, I retired, and uh, about two days later, my wife said, you need to go find something to be doing in your life, <laughs> and or you're going to drive me and the kids crazy. So I, I'm part of a men's group, and, and I've been for 18 years, and we don't discuss sports, and we don't discuss uh, business, we discuss our lives. And we all, and we all basically have a mission. And I had a kind of a benign mission. And as my wife said that to me, I just, I recognized that she was right and I needed to be doing any something. So I went to my men's group to work on what my mission would be. And my mission became very simple and just like this. I want to leave this world better than I found it. I have three, I have four children, I have four grandchildren, I have an incredible wife, and um, I'd like to, if I can do things that will benefit the world, then every day I get up is a blessing. Love it. Nice. So let's jump right in. What is phototherapy? Phototherapy is, is, is very, phototherapy started um, with tuberculosis. Okay. A hundred years ago. And um, light therapy was ultimately in those days used for multiple things. So to give you an idea, that, so we used, to, we used light to treat tuberculosis for about 20 or 30 years. And then we started using penicillin. And then we started using pharmaceuticals. And we... Where, where sun had been basically the medical treatment for hundreds of years, we now st started flipping over to pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. and um, the issues became the pharmaceuticals. We started be creating immunities to them, mm -hmm. as I'm sure y you've read about. Um, we we started uh, uh, the side effects, uh, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, but the side the side effects in many cases, uh, we did clinical trials for for MS, and um, actually one of the one of the mo the best days of my life, besides having children and getting married, was to be able to call several of my friends who had MS and tell them that we had successful clinical trials. And you know what they asked me? Yeah. Is it a pill? Mm. Now, I knew why they were asking, but I, had a, but I decided I'd play dumb and say, well, why are you concerned? And the, to, a, to a person, their answer was, the pill's worse than the treatment. Wow. And so where I was, and I was able to say, no, this is light therapy. There are no side effects. There are, there is no downside to it, and there's multiple possibilities as to the potential beyond MS. We started with MS clinical trials as partners with the University of, of Illinois. Um, so basically what's happened now is we're going back to looking at pharmaceuticals, and, and I'm, you've certainly read about the things that have gone on. I, it's personal to me because I have a relative, a very close relative who never took a drug in her life and became addicted to opioids. Wow. She was a housewife. She had issues in, Amer in, a, in Amer I'm sorry, she had issues in having a child. They gave her opioids. 
and then she spent the next six months getting, and thank God this was years ago and she's never gone back. I also, when I made, when I made this, my mission to leave the world better, there was two areas. One was medical and one was dealing with veterans. And uh, actually here in Aspen, I started two veteran organizations. The first one was called Children of Heroes and we, I fully funded it and we raised money the Paul Newman way, created things to sell and then were contributed to children who lost parents in the military. Mm. I then started another organization here with two wounded Iraqi veterans. And the, basically, what, to make it simple, what we were going to do is my, my expertise is in running a business. That's what I can do. That's probably the extent of my talents. And what I want, my goal was to show veterans how they could start their own business how how to incorporate how to and then i created specific products for them that i would not sell to anyone but veterans mm. so but what i learned from that both of them were on over 25 pharmaceuticals mm. and as one of them said to me i'm just a guinea pig that's all i am and they weren't working and um, unfortunately, the other partner, who was a uh, Paralympic skier, and uh, many people know him, Casey Owens, who uh, was my partner, and, and I lost him. And my life changed with that because where I was doing the medical and I was working with the veterans, it was a project. And when I lost Casey, it all became a mission. Yeah. So now my life mission has turned the medical side of it is now benefiting the veterans. And I give, I talk to Casey's mother daily because she blesses me, although I don't deserve it, for keeping his name alive, which as I said to her, will be alive forever. So getting back to the question you asked as, as to what our, uh, pharma, our phototherapy, uh, phototherapy, there is, evidence but through researchers all over the world as to the potential of the sun and UVB as therapy. And having, again, having lost my dear friend to um, what I believe was 25 opioids, or 25, he was on opioids also, but um, that I started in the area of, of research as to the potential for vitamin D and UVB. And I, and I have a dear friend who's a neurologist who I brought the idea to, and he said, keep going for it because his belief, as is many other beliefs, is the future of medicine is in the sun. Now, I know it's a bold statement, but I started this 10 years ago, so I'm ahead. Of, I'm pretty far ahead of the rest of the world in terms of using sunlight. We I have probably the most sophisticated UVB device and LED device. We're well ahead, but the reason, the way I got there was, I started doing research. And for instance, there was a study in Sweden that 20,000 women over 30 years. And the study was the women who went out in the sun in the summer and the ones that didn't, the ones that didn't had a 50% higher death rate mm. from all causes. So that was one of the areas that I started. And then I started researching uh, information from Harvard, MIT, et cetera, et cetera. All of them saying the same thing and that is the potential of the sun as a treatment, and in Australia, they're doing a lot of research on it. So I said, well, that's, that's all wonderful, but what's going wrong here? Because these are all very scientifically based theories, but who's doing clinical trials? Because you can't, 
I can't say to you, let's do a clinical trial. You go sit out in the sun for three, three days a week for 10 minutes, and that's it. it. It has to be scientific. It has to be with protocols. In our case, it was partners with the University of Illinois. And um, so I saw my mission real quick. And as I said earlier, the one thing that I'm good at is developing a business. And so my business now became, why isn't there anything out there to test the theory? And that led me to bring on a team, a neurologist. I brought on two engineers who had actually, who uh, built for Siemens and GE. And, oh, and as an interesting aside, they have one device that none of us will ever see or touch. It's on the moon because NASA hired them. So I, I brought on the best engineers I could. I brought on a PhD researcher from uh, Mass General. And most of these people weren't paid, by the way. Yeah. Before we get to your solution, though, let's, let's okay. really address the issues. <laughs> well, you so, got me on a roll. I know. You, yeah, that's easy to do. <laughs> um, vitamin D deficiency, right? So that's really the issue. People are not getting enough sunlight, which is the, the UVB rays that hit the skin, that then the body then is able to convert and create vitamin D. Is that correct? That's well, the basis? Well, uh, I'll, I'll give you a brief walk through the, of the medical uh, because it, uh, I believe it's important. What's happening is the sun, and the, when I say the sun, it's at certain hours. It's typically in Colorado in, in the winter. Would, it might be from 11 to 1. If it was Chicago, it would be from 11 to 11.05. But in the summer in Colorado, which I did some research on it, it's about 10.30 till 2.30. You're getting the exact right wavelengths of the sun so which is giving you the vitamin d so what's happening in your in your body is the sun is is hitting your skin in your skin is a, is basically a number seven cholesterol cholesterol the number seven doesn't really matter but what happens is when the sun coagulates with the cholesterol it goes through your kidney your liver and then every cell in your body is a recipient of it because it's not of a it's the misnomer is vitamin D is not a vitamin. Vitamin D is a steroidal horm a hormone. Okay. So it's now converted into a steroid and hormone, and every cell in your body is a recipient. So if I say to you that here's something in the universe that every cell in your body uses, might that get your attention that there's a need for it. So what, what we've been, so, and that's basically the way, the way uh, the process works and eventually um, every cell uses it and we're still, we're still in the study stage in, because each cell may use it for different reasons. Okay. So we're, we're still, we have answers as to things we can treat and cure, but we're still in the process of why is it treating MS, for instance, and Parkinson's and other things that, that have different issues involved? So I re the most interesting thing I read early on was the system I just described to you is the most complicated system in your body. So as people question it, I read from a scientist, I can't take credit for this one, but uh, I have a team of very spiritual people that are that do this work and they love this because what this person said was it's the most complicated system in your body did god make a mistake and did god make a mistake when he made africans dark and people from finland light and the answer is no that it leads back to the fact that we are getting closer and closer to the belief that the future of medicine is the sun. And I was, when I started this research, one of the top research people at the University of Illinois, this goes about seven, eight years ago, said, I, if you find that your device and vitamin D is, and, and, and the sun, 
is the is the answer you change you will change medicine and of course this was eight years ago and I said that's really interesting and it really feeds my ego but on the other hand it's a long way to go well not only I but some but top scientists and top researchers are now coming to the belief that it is the potential to train change science and get rid of opioids and get rid of pharmaceuticals now it's not going to fix a broken leg but one of the interesting one of our devices for pain i have a friend who has parkinson's and this is kind of an example how one thing leads to another she has parkinson's she can't get out of bed in the morning because the pain is terrible but i have a, ba a device for pain using leds i said i don't have any idea whether it'll work i have a suspicion but there's no there's no side effects there's no downside there's no medical risk there's no uh, that was five months ago she cannot go a day without it she gets up in the morning she puts the device on for about 20 minutes she goes through the whole day she puts it on again at night and I didn't know that was going to happen but now I, we have to start looking at at the potential for treating Parkinson's pain. Um, one thing led to another. A, uh, another in the area of pain, I have a friend who won the Congressional Medal of Honor, who and he has a book coming out soon, Zero to Hero, because he was picked on as a kid. And then he's one of only 71 living Congressional Medal of Honor winners and the nicest man in the world. And he said to me two to three years ago, if you ever solve my back pain, I will hug you and kiss you. I said, well, we can probably leave that part of it out. But he's had chronic pain since Vietnam. Mm. And I have four emails from him saying, bless you, bless you, bless you. I get up in the morning and I put your device on, and I'm writing a book, and I can sit and write for six hours. And in in the past, he it would the pain wouldn't allow him to do it. So again, this it's light therapy, and all it is is that we've discovered the right LED and infrared level that works for him. So there's this, these constant areas, and to bring even more current there's two areas that that really we've come into in the last four to five months one of them is uh sepsis so sepsis 30 million people in the world have sepsis it kills six million people a year it kills 200,000 americans a year it's and uh, reading a scientist, I don't understand. We have something out there that kills that amount of people, and nobody's there's no re nothing's happening with it. Well, research has now come out that that the answer to sepsis, the co there's a correlation between low vitamin D. Mm. So, we have now created a portable device. So if you go into a hospital, it's where they get it, and an ICU, or if you're in the military and you're wounded, which leads to sepsis, if you use this device three days a week for five minutes, you'll have all the vitamin D you need, and that vitamin D increases your immunity, which they're now finding is what will prevent the sepsis. If you get the sepsis, after the fact, it'll the it shows it'll cure it, but I go back to where we were before. We have the only device that can do all this. And, and the way ultimately, to, as shortly as I can do it, the way we got to this device is we knew the exact wavelengths we needed. And we went all over the world. We found two companies in the whole world that could produce the right light because it had to be at 308 nanometers. And... That was that's the exact wavelength. And then there's a lot of other technical areas to it, but it became as as simple as that. And then we now there's only one company, and we have all we have the rights to it. Although 
I'm willing to share it with anyone. But anyway, that's how we wound up developing the device, and that's why maybe we have this device and it's not out there. One other thing is I didn't, divide, I didn't create this to get rich. I didn't create this to make money. I created it, going back to what I said before, I created it because there's so much science out there that says that light therapy is effective. I created it for other institutions because I can't, there's so many clinical trials that could be done. Cancer, to, just to give you a background, at the equator, there's virtually no breast cancer, prostate cancer, there's virtually no autism, there's no MS. Northern Canada, MS and, and autism are epidemics. University of Aberdeen in Scotland is one of the major studies of it because it's an epidemic there. And um, so, like I said, which is, that's where a lot of our science started to come from. We started to look, not me, but others started to look around and say, uh, to give you an idea, over the 38th parallel, um, breast cancer is, if, if you looked at a chart, would go like this once you get over the 38th parallel or uh, or way south where it's the same scenario. So it, there's so much that goes back to the issue of the sun and its benefits. And I, I am a true believer that we are going to prove, to me, I've kind of proved it to myself. There's a lot of scientists have already proven it to, but we need to do it. And the way my answer is to create as many of these devices as I can and get them out, not to the individuals that are using it, but to scientists, because they're, they're going to come back and say, yeah, we, we, can, we can treat cancer, we can treat uh, Parkinson's, we can treat these. But that's what I'm saying. I, I can't create a big enough organization to do all this research. But I have the researchers and the devices to give to institutions. For instance, we're working with, the, we're, do, we're partnering with the Department of Defense, we're partnering with the VA, we're partnering with Mass General, we will be partnering with uh, um, uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine because they've just, they have a world-renowned expert there, which I think you know a little bit about. and. Um, her answer is for diabetes. Right. It, her answer is diet and vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another diabetes. If you're if you're again over the 47th parallel, and you're under 14 years old, you have a 10 to 15 percent higher chance of getting type 1 diabetes. There's just so much out there that leads you to believe that the sun might just be the answer. And, and it's right here in Aspen, because if you read reports about health, the health of people out here is, is significantly better than where I come from in Chicago. And um, because these are people that are outside and they're getting sun and um, they're healthier. Yeah, yeah, no, you feel it. I mean, first of all, everything on the planet re requires sun, sunlight. Anything right. that's alive on the planet needs it via personally absorbing it or, or eating it. Um, and then, um, yeah, you feel it when you have days where there hasn't been sun and all of a sudden you feel the warmth, it's your whole body reacts right. to it. You feel well, the value. And, and, there's, and it's proven medically You've probably heard sad where people buy these lights and they put them on their eyes mm -hmm. for, you don't have the issue here, but Chicago, we don't see the sun from probably October until March. So, but we've now found that sun anywhere in your body is an antidepressant. So when you go out there, as you just said, and feel good in the sun, and the assumption is, well, of course, sun would make you feel good. Well, there's a scientific reason it right. makes you feel good, because, like I say, it it, it uh, becomes an it's an antidepressant. 
Good. Well, we only have a couple more minutes. Are there any final thoughts that you have that you would like to share? Yes. I have, I have one. So this would be the, the best message I could leave because we're still doing a lot of research. So, A, I hope to a lot of people, and I would suggest I have two websites that you could probably, that we've done tons of research and it's annotated. It's all based, on, for instance, one's 50 pages, but 10 of them are just all the researchers we've used. So if you go to one of my websites, it's either uh, Sun Health Tech or Medicine Health you'll find lots of information. You'll see there's a place you can hit white pages and it'll give you all the science behind this. So if you're dealing with any of those potential diseases, I would go to these websites and you'll learn a lot more about it. And if nothing else, you'll see the possibilities that we're not far away from answers. But the other part of it is until then, I always get one question asked. Okay, you know, you're a year away from full from going through the federal government and FDA. What do I do? Well, there there's an answer to that. And and the answer is if you go out in the sun 3 days a week for 10 minutes, you will get all the vitamin D you need. Now, I recognize that in the winter it's a little bit hard, but I, in the summer, wear shorts, halter top or something. Expose, you're really trying to expose about 40% of your body. But it will give this device that I'm telling you about that's had, all it's doing is what I just told you. It's giving you at that time, but it has to be between 10 and 2. And the reason is you're getting... You've, you're getting UVB 308. You're not, and if you do it in the morning or night, you're getting UVA, which re, which reduces your vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So, and one, just one other thing to that: if you do that, it also is stored. So when winter comes, for some period of winter, you'll have storage. So, get out in the sun. Like I said, 10 minutes will give you 20,000 IU's of vitamin D, which is all you need. Don't burn. Right. Yeah. Good. And you, which, which, so that, that's my advice to the public and, and uh, both for mental and physical. Wonderful. Larry, Thanks. thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate all the knowledge and what you're doing for the veterans. That's beautiful. Great. Thank, thank you. you. And it's been a pleasure being on your show. And, and it's, I love sharing it with the public because I believe it's important. Thank you. Thank you. As always, you guys, check out AspenTalksHealth.com. I'll put up Larry's contact information and where you can find out more information about all this that we've discussed. Thanks for tuning in.